iPhone 8 Plus two months later experience coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to my iPhone 8 Plus two months later experience video. Now I did a full review on this phone back around when it was first launched. You could check that out if you wanna know like a full review. But here I'm gonna share with, my, with you my experiences after using this thing well into December now, got it like late September around that time frame. And uh, let's just quickly run through the key specs just to give you a refresh. 5.5 inch 1920 by 1080p display here that's a true tone display 12 megapixel dual cameras on the rear 2160p video recording up to 4k 60 3 gigabytes of ram and apple a11 bionic chipset and a 2691 milliamp hour battery here but i want to go ahead and begin with the first category which is going to be the design the body and the build okay so i want to talk about the design the body and the build using this thing for the past two months so basically this thing just screams iphone 6 plus iphone 6s plus and in my time using it i always felt that way that it just felt like you know the older phone just touched up here however using it day to day with its performance with its glass back with its wireless charging it still felt like a 2017 phone even though the design looks like it's a 2015 or a 2014 design it still had the guts on the inside the camera and everything to make it feel like it's still a current device so while the design might look classic when actually using it the design you know definitely with the internals and the glass wireless charging like i say it just felt like a 2017 phone so overall i kind of do like the design one thing i don't like is that this glass in the rear, you can't really see it on camera. There's no way you're gonna pick it up here on camera, but it does get little nicks, like like these little tiny specks of nicks on the glass. You can see them if you look in the right light. Of course, you're not gonna see them here. It's too minute, too detailed here for this lens to pick up, but they do get these little like chips and these little nicks on the glass, so keep that in mind. However, the iPhone 10 doesn't have this aluminum border, so this aluminum border is more durable than the iPhone 10 is with its stainless steel, which I am gonna report in my upcoming video, did scratch. So the iPhone 8 Plus is design overall, a little bit more durable, I would say, than the iPhone 10. And this gray is a little bit more, or this silver is a little bit more toned down than the silver on the iPhone 10, which is a little bit more shiny. So you can see chips in that glass even easier than the one here on the 8 Plus. So one thing I didn't like about its design is its weight. Its phone is just a little bit too heavy. I think it's over 200 grams and it's really felt day to day. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, come on, man. It's, it's just a phone, 202 grams, come on. No, actually, when you use a lighter phone and then you come back to this phone, it starts to just feel too heavy, like an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 7 Plus was even 30 grams lighter than this phone so this phone is huge and heavy it's one of the heaviest phones that i've used all year maybe ever to be honest so i didn't like that it actually cramped my hand when using it for long periods of time i got like little pains right here in the hand from using this device for a long time so keep that in mind heavy device but it definitely feels premium it has a nice wide display and that with that being said let's go ahead and talk about that display okay so talking about the display this display right here is at 1920 by 1080 retina display this is not the super retina display as found in the iphone 10 but it does give you true tone and i found that to actually make a difference it basically makes this difference so if you buy an iphone 8 plus and you have true tone on you have a warmer display if you take off true tone you have a more i would say accurate display for like photo editing as well as for if you like cooler temperatures on your panel overall this display definitely tends to air towards the more warmer side if you do want to pick this one up here now in terms of sharpness that LCD panel is pretty sharp at 401 pixels per inch it's not the sharpest 2k panel and there is better displays when it comes to just pure sharpness but this display has been one of the easiest on the eyes for me to read all year I don't know what it is maybe it's the LCD doesn't flicker you know you can't really see flickering on OLED panels you know from your eye but if you put a camera lens there's actually flicker that's not visible on pretty much all OLED OLED panels so this one was a very easy on the eyes to read and for long periods of times looking at this display you know you raise up the text if you have bad eyes this is going to be a great phone for you here same 
goes with the LCD small iPhone 8. So overall viewing angles are pretty great. However, the one killer thing about this display that nobody, you know, likes to see is that the colors don't like pop out. So that pretty much kills it for a lot of people when they go into a store and they see Samsung's phone where the display just like jumps out at them. Then this one is just like kind of, you know, it's a little bit bland. It's a little bit just accurate. People don't look at it and be like, I want that display right there. And that's a huge selling point for the iPhone 10. I mean, <laughs> people are just going to fall for what's more visually colorful and pleasing. But I could tell you right now that in reality, this display might be easier on a lot of your guys' eyes than you might think. So overall, I think this is a stellar display. It's one of the best of the year. It's just not, you know, better than some of the OLED panels, you know, like the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 or maybe even the iPhone 10. Something small but rather significant that I want to mention in my two months experience using this phone is this phone boots up extremely fast and it's kind of funny because you only have to just barely tap this phone for it to start up whereas old iPhones you actually had to hold down the power button for quite a time. So if you like to boot your phone up fast you're going to love the iPhone 8 Plus. Just a small thing I wanted to mention in my experience using it. Now the software is a big one to talk about here. I just got iOS 11.2.1. I actually didn't do the software update on the channel because it was so insignificant. And it was a tiny update with a HomeKit access. Most of you probably don't even use HomeKit, so I didn't feel like it was warranted to make a video about this. It was just too small of an update. However, 11.2 was a big one, and I did cover that one on the channel, and it's actually made the iPhone 8 Plus basically lag-free. Now, when I first got this, there was some glitches here and there, but now with 11.2, as goes with most of the other iPhones, a lot of those bugs have been fixed, and this phone is starting to run pretty darn smooth and pretty accurately, you know, responsive all the time. So I haven't had no glitches since 11.2, but when I first got this phone, there was hangs and glitches and I was pretty disappointed that Apple released an $800 phone with these problems. However, they've been rectified and now I'm really starting to enjoy the speed and fluidity of iOS 11 on the iPhone 8 Plus. So software here, while I do think that it still feels a little stale in comparison to the modern look and feel of the Pixel, this thing here is still gonna be pretty good software. Now, some people are gonna disagree with me there, but if you look at an iPhone from 10 years ago, it's the same grid of icons. Now, the control center is nice, don't get me wrong. The settings is nice, but I still would like to see Apple do something where I could put my icons wherever I want and just kind of clean this up a little bit, make it look a little bit different. I mean, it looks the same all the time, almost every year. And this year was just a slight tweak, I think, in terms of software. The control center was the biggest change, however. So overall, software is fantastic on the whole. In conclusion, you're going to get great software here. And my experience after two months has been after 11.2, pretty great. So let's talk about the battery life with the iPhone 8 Plus. And I've mentioned it in a couple of my other videos and you might have watched them. The battery life on here has been the best of the year for any smartphone I have used. Now, some people like to disagree with me with the Note 8, that's fine. If you're getting better battery life on your Note 8 than this phone, that's great for you. But I use the Snapdragon 835 version. It's pretty good on battery life, don't get me wrong. But the iPhone 8 Plus has been stellar when it comes to just pure longevity. I can just take this phone out off charge at 100%. And I know I'm getting through the full day with ease on the iPhone 8 Plus. I don't even have to bring the charger because I know it's going to make it. And this is one of the only phones this year that I can actually say that it did that with pretty much 100% confidence that it's going to stay the whole day on. And standby time is great. So overall, if you're looking for a battery champ, this is probably the best battery life iPhone you could buy right now. And two months later, it hasn't degraded whatsoever with regardless of any of the updates. Another one thing I want to mention after two months is the wireless charging. I got this wireless charger by RAV Power. Yeah, I'll link it down below if you're interested. It's a fast charger. With 11.2, Apple did ump up the like ampage hour or whatever they do to make it faster when you put it on wireless charging so yes this thing it was pretty cool to have it feels like a luxurious feature because you know you're working at your desk or whatever you're doing and you have your pad right there you just plop it down now if you're somebody who you know doesn't really work a lot at home or you don't have a desktop where you like you're always at your desktop or something like that wireless charging might not be so fantastic for you because you might just be out using a regular charger everywhere you go so I think this is going to play more for people that just like convenience over, you know, plugging in a wire or something like that. But I really wanted to mention that because I did love that feature on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, let's talk about the next thing, which is going to be my great experiences with Apple Pay. So I don't know what it is, but 
this phone just seemed to be super responsive when it comes to paying with Apple Pay. So if you do use the Apple Pay setup here for the iPhone 8 Plus when you go into stores, it's going to be crazy good for that. So, you know, not all stores do support the iPhone 8 Plus's pay system, but, you know, the ones that do, it's pretty darn fast. It's actually faster than Samsung Pay. However, you do have more stores that support Samsung Pay because they basically mimic a card reader, which basically makes your options pretty much endless for the most part. Now, I want to talk about the audio experience with the iPhone 8 Plus as well. It has been pretty great. You know, it's very loud. Let me play a little song here. Or let me just play, you know, a video from my channel here. Let me go to my channel. And let's go ahead and click on the Note 8 versus the iPhone 10 comparison. Let this quick ad go by. And let it play. So here it goes. Up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. And welcome to the iPhone 10 versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Full comparison. Cover that side, and you still have speaker up here. It's a great speaker. It's just plenty loud. And also uh, the speaker at the earpiece sounds good on phone calls as well. So that aspect of audio has been great. Now, in terms of the headphone jack being gone, I still am very annoyed by having to find this dongle every time I want to use a wired headset. So this has been a huge problem for me. I mean, it's not a huge problem for everyone, but at the same time, I still think there's a lot of people that have wired headphones. I mean, Bose has a, uh, what is it? The Bose QC25s on sale for the holidays right now. Those are wired headphones. And if you wanted to take advantage of that deal and you have an eight or an eight plus or a 10 or even a seven or a seven plus, you don't have a headphone jack. Now you could say, well, I could just use my dongle. Well, I mean, it's pretty easy to lose that dongle. I've lost it multiple times. I got like five of them. I can only find one. So I've lost like four out of five dongles so far. Now everybody's different, but I'm just saying those things are very easy to lose. Yeah, they're replaceable. That's another $10 in Apple's pocket for everyone who loses one, but it's just an annoyance overall. And I still don't like not having a headphone jack on my phone. Now, I am trying to adopt Bluetooth wireless with all of my headphones and things like that. And it's starting to get better. But for now, you know, Bluetooth, you know, not everybody's using Bluetooth just yet. So let's talk about the camera on the 8 Plus. What has my experience been like? Well, you've seen some versus videos on the channel. And over the two months, I, I don't want to go on too much about this. We all know this is a great camera. It is. It's just it's just like the same one that you get on the iPhone 10. All I got to say really about this camera, super smooth 4K60 video. It's not too much different from the iPhone 8 or 7 Plus in that, you know, the quality overall was really good on those phones. It punches up saturation a little bit. It works out a little of the few finer details. And overall, it's a bump up from the, the last generation of camera. It does give you these new modes in the portrait mode. And I've, I've found them useful. I do like them. And if I had to choose, I would say this is definitely an upgrade for camera over the prior 7 and 7 Plus. But I would not buy this phone just for camera. It's not that big of an upgrade, to be honest with you. Now, we're getting closer to the DSLR. We're getting closer to the point and shoots. But there's still some work to be done on both cameras until we can start really replacing our mirrorless cameras and setups. I don't know if that'll ever be possible with these tiny sensors, but we'll see. Now, I don't do a lot of gaming, but when I do, the iPhone 8 Plus runs every game that I've ever thrown at it pretty easily and uh, it's really nice to have these bezels when you're gaming now bezels you can argue are not the cutest or the best looking design choice for most manufacturers here in 2017 but when it comes to gaming they still come in plenty of handy and anybody who's using a bezeled phone knows what i'm talking about now in terms of the cooling functionality here or how it gets hot over the you know gaming because that's a really a concern for people who game a lot the iPhone 8 Plus did get warm, but it didn't get as warm as some of the prior iPhones. I found it to do a little bit better with staying cooler than older iPhones. And, and overall, when you're just using this phone day to day, it never gets hot. So that's a really nice feature to have is that, you know, it's something you don't notice until it happens. So if you had a phone before that gets hot when you're using it, when you have a phone that doesn't get hot, that's really nice. And you just don't notice it, but it's something that if it did happen, you would be really upset about. So this phone does a good job at staying cool in my past two months. So what is my conclusion of the iPhone 8 Plus? A lot of people will dismiss this phone as just a boring update to the iPhone 7 Plus. You know, data is showing that the iPhone 10 has now surpassed the 8 and 8 Plus for interest of upgrade or even upgrade. So the iPhone 10 is gaining on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. But don't don't push this one to the side. This is a this is not a sleeper phone here. 
in 2018 or in 2017 going into 2018 this phone right here is still a very viable option and honestly i think this is the best iphone you can buy right now let me explain why i'm not saying it's the best looking design or whatever like that but it's the most refined experience of the iphone lineup right now all the apps are very well optimized for this display this has the best battery life of any of the iphones it gives you virtually the same camera on the rear as the iphone 10 you know there's a portrait mode on the front camera of the iphone 10 you're probably not going to use that that much the speakers are the same as the iphone 10 and it's less money than the iphone 10 when it gives you a 16 by 9 wide display which allows you to go into landscape mode which i'm probably not going to do here because i think i'm in the zoomed mode let's see yeah it gives you landscape mode so you kind of mimic a little ipad mini here on your phone so to me this is the best iphone you can buy right now for an overall value standpoint anyway that's it here for me after two months it's been a pretty stellar experience using the iphone 8 plus the only downsides i would say is that it's too heavy i think that it's a little bit too pricey it could have been around the same price 769 as the iphone 7 plus another downside is that you know the design is questionable you might not like it here compared to you know the newer phones that are out here in 2017 and maybe it doesn't have an oled display but having an lcd and then having an oled iphone 10 gives us options so that's not really a downside anyway found this video helpful enjoyable entertaining informing do me a favor give it a thumbs up and if you're new here consider subscribing for more nick here helping you to master your technology be sure to be well i will catch you all in the next episode and peace